Summary of Hatchet by Gary Paulson A 13-year-old kid called Brian Robeson is flying across the vast wilderness of Canada with a middle-aged pilot. Brian can't stop thinking about how his parents' split has changed his life, and he can't stop thinking about it even when he's flying over a beautiful landscape. Brian also says that he knows the secret about his mother, which his father does not. Brian is quickly distracted when the pilot lets him take control of the plane, but he soon starts to think about the split again in a sad way. The reader learns that Brian lives near New York City but is on his way to northern Canada to see his father, who now has summer visiting rights. Brian is mad at his mom, but he also feels a little bad that he didn't talk to her in the car on the way to the airport. He remembers that she gave him a new knife for the trip as a gift. He is wearing it on a loop on his belt. The pilot starts to talk about pain in his shoulder and stomach, which takes Brian's mind off of what he was thinking. Brian knows the pilot is having a heart attack when he has quick, strong spasms. The pilot passes out, leaving Brian alone in the plane while it is in the air. Brian is scared when he sees that the pilot's spasms have thrown the plane off course, so he tries to get it back on track. He tries to get help on the radio, but he can't get a clear signal. After an hour, Brian knows for sure that the pilot is dead and that he will have to land the plane himself. The plane runs out of fuel all of a sudden and starts to fall. At the last second, Brian is able to guide the plane toward a lake. The plane lands in the water, even though the wings were torn off in the trees. Brian gets out of the sinking plane in a panic and swims to the lake beach, where he falls asleep. When he wakes up, the first thing he remembers is finding his mom in the car with a strange man while he and his friend Terry were out on their bikes. It is the secret that keeps him up at night. When Brian thinks about the crash, he starts to scream and cry. He is in terrible pain and doesn't know where he is. Brian loses awareness again and wakes up in pain and confusion early the next morning. Brian can't stop thinking about the pilot's death and can't move, especially after mosquitoes start biting him when the sun comes up. Before he falls asleep again, Brian tries to figure out where he is and sees a blur of a lake, trees, and a tall rocky mountain. Brian is very thirsty and burned when he wakes up, so he chooses to drink the water from the lake, even though it might not be safe. He keeps telling himself that he is nowhere and has nothing, even though he is trying to calm down. He keeps saying his own name over and over and tells himself that help should be coming soon. He remembers an English teacher named Perpik who always told his students to get inspired and stay cheerful. Brian's memory makes him go through everything he owns carefully, which reminds him of the hatchet. He also keeps in mind that he may be his most valuable possession. As Brian thinks about what's going on, he understands that rescuers might not come right away because the plane went off track. But he chooses to make a place to stay and find food so he can stay alive until they find him. Brian finds that the stone hill hides an overhang by the lake. Happy with his good luck, he chooses to turn the overhang into a shelter. Brian, who was very hungry, went around the lake to look for food. He found berries by following a group of birds. Even though they are sour, he eats a lot of them and picks more to take back to his new home. Brian wakes up in the middle of the night feeling terrible because he ate the berries. He is again lost in thoughts about his mother's affair. The next morning, he feels sorry for himself because he is lost, alone, and ugly, and he feels like he can't get away from his sadness. At some point, his hunger takes over, and he stops to eat a few of the riper berries before going to look for better food. As he's walking away, he can't help but think of his shelter as his home. Brian finds an area with raspberry bushes near the lake, but he is scared when a black bear comes out of the woods. But the bear leaves him alone because he is only interested in the berries. Brian understands that it doesn't hurt him, so he keeps picking berries. Later, he thinks about how the bear must have felt when it saw him. He realizes that this is the first time since the crash that he hasn't been thinking about his own pain. Brian is asleep that night when he hears an animal come into his shelter. He grabs his hatchet and swings it at the animal. He misses, and the animal, which turns out to be a porcupine, bites his leg. 
Brian starts to cry and feel sorry for himself again. This is when he remembers that he learned that feeling sorry for himself doesn't help. Brian has strange dreams about his father and his friend Terry, and when he wakes up the next morning, he remembers seeing the hatchet make sparks when he threw it against the rock wall during the night. Brian is completely focused on making fire and is able to make the sparks again. After a lot of trying and failing, he finally gets the sparks to catch in a nest of birch bark, which makes fire. Brian is so happy that he goes to get wood for the fire and promises to never let it go out. Soon after that, he finds turtle eggs in the sand near his shelter. This gives him a new way to get food. Brian starts to feel more sure that he can stay alive now that he has a fire and food, but he tells himself that he must also keep hope to be rescued. Brian decides to keep himself busy around his camp so he doesn't get too sad. He will clean, gather wood, and get food. He also builds a signal fire on top of the hill, but he doesn't light it. He does this so that if he hears a plane, he can send a smoke signal. Brian can feel his mind changing. He is more aware of his surroundings and notices more things than he did when he lived in the city. He also knows that the lake has a lot of fish and plans to make a stick to catch them. Brian builds a bow out of springy wood and one of his shoelaces when his fish spear doesn't work. He is far from his shelter when he hears the engine of a plane while he is cutting wood for the bow. Excited, he runs back to light the warning fire, but just as he gets the smoke going, the plane turns around and goes back. When Brian finds out that the plane is gone, he feels like he can no longer live on his own and goes into a deep depression. Brian stands in the shallow water of the lake and fishes, even though he is tired of eating fish. He turns around on a whim and sees a wolf on the hill behind him. Brian is scared at first, but he soon learns that the wolf is just part of nature and doesn't want to hurt him. The reader learns that it has been 42 days since Brian was so sad when the plane flew away. The story goes back in time to that time, when Brian tried to kill himself with the hatchet before realizing that he had to keep living. After the crash, Brian learns that he is not the same person he was before it and that he must now depend on himself to stay alive. Brian has a lot of failures and mistakes as he learns to live in the wild, but he sees them as opportunities to learn. He is able to make a bow, learn how to shoot and cook fish, which gives him the strength to think he can keep living on the tough hope of self-reliance. Several times, Brian makes mistakes that put his life in danger, like when a skunk that seems innocent almost makes him blind. Still, Brian learns from each mistake and gets better at staying alive. Over time, he even learns how to hunt and kill some of the birds that live in the woods. He realizes that he needs to be calm and aware of his surroundings if he wants to stay alive. Back in the present, Brian has managed to make a life for himself in the woods, even though he is still hungry and at risk. The next morning, while he is hunting, a moose strikes him for no reason. It hurts his lungs badly and scares him. He goes back to his shelter to rest, but that night, a storm destroys his camp and scatters his belongings. Brian can't believe how quickly his luck can change, but he also feels stronger than he used to and promises to rebuild the camp even as the tornado destroys it. When he wakes up in the morning, he can see the plane's tail sticking out of the water. He prays that the pilot can get some rest. Brian starts to put back together his shelter and camp. As he does this, he remembers the emergency kit in the plane and wonders if he can get to it now that part of the plane is above the water. He chooses to look around the plane, so he makes a makeshift raft to stand on in the water. He uses his hatchet to make a hole in the plane, and at one point he drops his hatchet into the lake. Brian gets the hatchet out of the lake, even though he thought it was lost for good. He then uses it to make a hole in the plane big enough for him to crawl through. Brian dives down and quickly finds the survival pack, which is floating between the plane's body supports. In the process, he sees the pilot's head, which is mostly eaten by fish and is in bad shape. Brian is scared, but he manages to get himself and the emergency pack out of the plane and, finally, back to camp. Brian is so tired that he falls asleep right away. The next morning, when Brian opens the emergency pack, 
He can't believe how much good stuff it has, like sleeping bags and food. Even a gun is there, which makes him feel very different from the wild world around him. He puts the gun down and also finds a radio for emergencies. He turns it on, but it looks like it's broken. Brian is so excited about the food that he decides to have a feast before he has to divide up the rest. He starts cooking several boxes over his fire. A relief plane lands on the lake all of a sudden. The pilot of the plane asks him if he is the lost kid and Brian, who is shocked, invites the man to eat with him. In the end, the reader finds out that the pilot heard the signal from Brian's radio, which he had left on by accident. Brian finds that he has changed a lot when he gets back home. He is much calmer and more aware than he was before. He often thinks about the lake and how beautiful it is. Even though his parents are glad to have him back, they don't get back together, and Brian's life goes back to normal pretty quickly. He thinks about telling his father about the secret, but he doesn't. About the author. Gary Paulson had a hard childhood. He and his mother moved around a lot, living in places like the Philippines and Hawaii. Paulson ran away from home when he was 14. He worked many different jobs for the next 30 years to make money so he could keep writing. He loves being outside and has done things like sail in the Pacific and race sled dogs. In 1983, he even took part in the Iditarod Trail sled dog race. He has written more than 100 books. Many of them are based on his own experiences living and working in the woods. His books are both fiction and fact, and they are for both kids and adults. Also, many of his works show a character coming of age, like Brian does in Hatchet. Paulson lives with his wife Ruth, who draws pictures for children's books. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.